Hi, I'm Rob Goldberg. I'm here in my shop near Haines, Alaska, where I make guitars, violins, cellos, and mandolins. I love working with musicians to make the instrument that's just right for them so that they can make the music that they want to make. And music is great because music makes people happy. Hi, I'm Lauren S.H. Scannelberry. I'm here in my cozy home office in Anchorage. 2023 was really good to me. I got to perform in person for the first time since before the pandemic and remember how special that is. This was also a year that I redefined for myself what it means to be an artist. I'm still writing songs, recording albums, performing, but I'm also more interested in making music in community. I got to see music this year as a healing agent for um, by playing music with people experiencing homelessness. And I want to continue exploring music as not just product, but as process and community and connection. And I'm excited to do more of that in 2024. Hey man, this is Kurt Riemann at Surreal Studios in downtown Anchorage, Alaska. This is the control room and that's the studio. Lots of microphones, good stuff in there coming in and make a beautiful sound. What I want to talk to you about is the Alaska Music Podcast. If you've done any kind of music in Alaska, I want you to send it to me so we can put it on the podcast. It airs once a week and it's an hour's worth of Alaska music. Also, the other reason I watch your music is we have the Alaska Music Archives, a nonprofit that is collecting music from the 40s up until this week. So if you're doing music, you want to send it to us so it gets in that archive. Send us a single, send us an album, or whatever's next. All right, take care. Stay warm with an Alaskan song in your heart. I love loving all the faces of all the people that I get to see on these videos, man. Um, I'm going to invite some artists up to join me. We're going to do one last chat, and it is just uh, just artist to artist about how we have survived this so far and how we plan to survive the life of being an artist. Um, I am so happy that y'all were able to join me. Thank you. Um, I'd love for you to introduce yourselves for folks who don't know, Ashley and, and then Audrey and then... Ashley Young. My name is Ashley Young. My singer-songwriter, based in Anchorage. Um, I I lived away for 13 years, and I've been I came back in 2021, and have been just aggressively involved. Did we get here? Check check. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and just trying to uplift other artists, just like kind of what we were talking about on some of these bullets, big time uh, proponent in when one of us is uplifted, all of us are. Mic check, hello. Hi, I'm Adriana Latonio. I have been performing as a singer, dancer, um, just overall artist for a majority of my life. Um, and I'm currently in Pipeline Vocal Project as the soprano. Mm-hmm. And Ivy. Mm-hmm. I'm Ivy Silence, and I am Alaska's goth duo, yeah. Cliff and Ivy. Um, <laughs> we've played music together since the 80s and specifically this project since 2011 and uh, we are currently working on a new album last year we toured we tour almost every year but last year I think we did about 14 gigs and 13 of them were out of state one was in Fairbanks so glad to be here <laughs> go Fairbanks uh, um, I am going to ask kind of a different question, and this is um, about your, uh, if you have any thoughts about your relationship to um, uh, body health disciplines of wellness, mental health in your own life, your family life, um, how you think of that, and what it, what, what, how it relates to you as a musician. I just want to hear your general thoughts. Mm-hmm. 
you don't have you can go in any order <laughs> just anything ivy go ahead body health something. like how to take care of yourself physically and stuff I think you can define it broadly. So when, when you say take care of yourself, I think we all think of the thing we're worst at doing maybe. So, but, um, <laughs> or the thing that we prioritize the most, I don't know. But. Uh, just, you know, for myself, um, I started a vegan diet a couple of years ago after being a vegetarian. That helped me. It doesn't mean any, you know, like it's not a superior thing at all. I just do what Try to be as healthy as you can. Um, and try to keep it in balance. Give yourself time to rest, and just realize that sometimes your your creative process takes time. Um, with our family, it's interesting. Cliff and I do have two young adult sons who have autism, and so we spend every moment with them. You know, they live at home with us. Uh, they are very inspiring to us and bring us that kind of different look at life. And through music, because of the genre that we do, we've been able to connect with a lot of people who are, you know, in the community of neurodivergent thought. Um, and it's kind of a different approach. So we just went with it over the years, of course, because you have to, because that's the way, you know, if they're your kids, what are you going to do, you know? Um, and just give space for something you didn't expect. And that's, that's one thing I think is, has been valuable. One method that I try and employ is accountability. So I think there are a lot of, you know, throughout the years, you know, I'm, I'm 29. I'm like, yeah, I would love if I'm, tr I'm working on it. I feel like this is the decade where like my diet really gets better. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of things I always want to adjust and we're always fluctuating with those healthy habits. But as far as being the best person that I can be, it's important for me and my drummer Shane Russell and I were actually talking about this last night, is like have people around you who are honest with you and that you're willing to be honest with them back and that you can encourage each other's healthy habits, especially when, you know, we're in touring lifestyles and, um, you know, the types of people who are just, I mean, I'm a go-getter. I'm always so busy. I always have all of these ideas. I don't really have a routine. I'm always trying as a goal to change up how I'm living and so it's it's hard to be just like really balanced and so having people around you that are like being honest with you about maybe ways that you're going overboard or about ways that maybe you're not showing up for each other um, and not showing up for yourself emotionally exercise um, you know uh, substance abuse or, or use I think just accountability is a great way to go yeah well I think one thing to remember is that we kind of have to get rid of the comparison because as an artist we are so vulnerably putting ourselves out there um, and one thing we need to remember is that everybody's journey is different. So if you're looking at an artist on social media who seems to be living their dream, right? Um, there is a lot of work that goes into that, that we don't see. Um, so for me personally, I think that something that's super important is listening to your body, um, whether that's vocally, physically, mentally. Um, some, again, it's all different for other people, but for me, I need a time of rest, right? Other people are go, 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 Miss Ashley here. Um, go, 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 right? Um, but sometimes you just need that time to kind of sit in the process and remember that part of the process can be just resting because um, it's super important for the body. Um, yes, and then as far as listening to everything else, I think it's figuring out like what's in alignment with you at that moment because the only thing that is, um, that is constant in life is change. And I, I really applaud you for constantly trying to change your life because that's the way to roll with the punches. And um, yeah. Is there any, uh, is there ever any tension in the way that you have to engage with image? Um, as an artist, as a person, you, like, we very often have to promote ourselves, and that often means making a little caricature of ourselves that we have to, like, have, have a part of us inhabit. And 
you know, it's it, part of it's real, part of it's not. But like I um, have always found that something that you have to negotiate, especially with promotion. Um, has that um, impacted you or have you like have you wrestled with that at any point? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the whole image thing, it's like, you know, I mean, when you think about it with, uh, with, <laughs> sorry, I'm like breaking the mic. The, um, everything, golly gee, the bar is so high for image right now, especially for women and, uh, you know, whatever. Um, in my genre, you know, there's a lot of expectation about things like that, um, and at the same time, I use it like that, too, because inside, believe it or not, I, I feel like I'm a shy person. But if I put on the image, I can go out and just do all this badass stuff that I couldn't do as my <laughs> normal, everyday character, you know, creating a character and living it. It's lucky because I like skulls and I like Halloween and, you know, all the things that I like, you know, I get to be. And you are putting on a show if you're at the grocery store, you know, wherever it's it just sort of feeds you, so I've played that. But then there's also a lot of expectations for, you know, how you sound when you sing. You have a very low voice, like a low, like very low register voice. A lot of times people are like, is that you singing? Is that your husband singing? Um, that sounds like a guy, you know, like, and I'm just like, you know, okay, deal with it. And so I've, I, and I write about it, you know, and I, and I get up and scream, too, just to watch people's faces, just to, like, because they're uncomfortable. It's the same theory as, like, a horror movie. It's like, make them a little uncomfortable, and then they, they can't, they, it's so compelling, like a train wreck, like, they got to come back. They got to keep looking at it. Seriously, it's happened, you know. And most of the time, if we play with other bands, we, of course, we play the goth night and stuff, but sometimes... We'll play with, like, all these different diverse bands, and, you know, people are like, hmm. Uh, sometimes I feel like I get snubbed because I don't have that, like, ethereal, you know, like, ethereal goth, you know. It, it happens. It does. And then there's the age thing, you know, and I'm the, kind of the same way. I'm like, okay, now I'm an, an artist of legacy or an artist of age or whatever. But that's okay because this this, you know... I guess just lean into the genre is my only sum up of that. But but yeah, it does it does it does affect it does affect us, me. So know your audience and reevaluate the way that you are engaging with your community. If you feel crushed by not reaching your ideal image or what you think that you should appear as what you how you think you should be being perceived you're probably trying to reach the wrong audience you know and you'll and as hard as you try you'll probably never reach them you know so if you're finding that you think that you're not successful because you don't look a certain way um think about what are ways that I can give back to my community what are ways that I'm not um that I'm not giving, that I'm not interacting with, you know, because you could be you could be totally focused on appearance and on yourself, and maybe you even nail it. Maybe you get the right look, and then you'll kind of find out that you don't really have as many people behind you for longevity. Image. Okay, so image for pipeline is a little bit different um, since there's the three of us and we're a collective. Um, so we tend to do kind of themes or colors, that kind of thing. Um, so one day we'll do black and white. Um, and we all kind of have our own style. So the fun part is figuring out what works for us. The hard part is seeing what works with all of us together because... Um, we want to make sure we look like one unit. Um, but I think that it's a little bit harder for us because we have a very specific audience. Um, and with that, you know, we... How would I say this? I guess that there are, like, 
some biases right off the bat because we're women, right? And so I, there's this one comment that I remember hearing when we did a competition, and it was like, you need more sparkle. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, well, that's hard because we're more than what we look like, and we're great people, and we're funny and <laughs> talented, right? But in the industry, that's what it calls for. And that can be a little bit challenging to deal with and figure out. I would say it's part of the fun, though, too. Like, <laughs> I love, it, it's fun to, to, like, feel good and look good and, and play absolutely. that character. And there is no shame in that pursuit either. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't want to stop, but we got to stop. <laughs> um, I, what's my last question? My last question is... Um, if you could speak to someone new in their career or someone uh, someone of any age, I was going to say someone young, but actually you can start a music career or, or a music path or discipline at any time. Um, if you were to speak to someone new in it, um, which you kind of are, actually, um, like what would you tell them about the why that keeps you going over time or that you want to keep you going for a long time? What would you tell them? Mm -hmm. For me, performance is about connection. Creating music, writing, recording is about connection. And the, the reason why I want to continue working in the industry forever is connection. It's connecting with my audience. It's connecting with other creative people um, in any industry. You know, we're all working together. We're, we all work together. And so... My main focus since coming back to Alaska has just been building community and f brainstorming ways that I can work with other people because I will repeat myself, when one of us is uplifted, we are all uplifted. I think about us all like holding hands and every once in a while we got to like catapult one person one person up into the air <laughs> will be like, you go. <laughs> and then the whole state is benefiting from that. And then, and then eventually everyone, you know, in the rest of the world is going to catch on to what we got going on up here in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely connection. That's the number one thing. Um, connection to yourself as well, adding on to that. Um, and really just... Find that community that you belong in um, because you know that there are going to be, be people rooting for you and it'll only push you to keep going in whatever art form you want to pursue. Uh, this is a really good question. Um, you know, I think that you should think about telling your story. You can pick whatever framework you like. You know, like I said, I like goth things and gothic imagery and stuff like that. I'm just trying to tell my story through that frame. And you can pick any frame, and you can mix the frames up, too. Some of the best things have happened to when it's collaborating either in your mind or literally with other people of two things go together. Um, they actually do go together really well. I've been doing this so long that I get to see, unfortunately, some of the artists that I like pass away and stuff. And, you know, cause that's how it's gone down and some of the family members and friends and things like that. And, um, you know, that's, that's a weird thing to see, but I would say to that person, just keep going and tell your story. What's in, what you do is what's important. We're always telling our story and people listen because it happens in Alaska. They're like, what's, what's goth in Alaska? What, what the heck is that? And that gets us in the door in so many different places and ways because it's like you can't even imagine it. Like, what does it mean? You know, so then you, you start to make up what that is and, and every single moment of your day can be a story for somebody. Like a trip to the grocery store, for me, could be a, that I put on TikTok or what, not that I'm really great at TikTok yet, but it could be. You know, and it, people would look at it because it's like, well, what are you doing over there in that place? And how do you do that? And how does that go together? And what's that? You make this personal mythology and treat yourself like you're a living myth. Like 
every moment of every day, and people will take up and notice the internet is a big deal. Use that. Use the internet to tell your story and to, to you know, spin your mythological yarn because driving force, I, I just don't want to die boring. I don't think there's any risk of that, Ivy Silence. <laughs> I want to thank you guys. We're going to continue, and I'm going to say a few more wrap-up words, but thank you guys so much for joining us. Please, everyone, big hand. Yes. Um, check, check.